Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in the GoTo Shell series. In this series we'll discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for shell scripting in five minutes or fewer. Before we begin, first, due to its ubiquity and my experience with it, we're going to use Bash, specifically version 4 and higher. Secondly, I'm not perfect, so if you do spot any errors or mistakes on my part, let me know in the comments or by email and I'll try to get that corrected in the video. Welcome again everyone. Uh, today's lesson is going to be about what exactly is a shell. And I'll be candid with you, I almost didn't create this video because this whole series is trying to teach you how to do things in shell scripting. So it, it kind of implies that you have a basal level of knowledge of what a shell is in the first place. But with the length of these videos being so short, I figured it didn't really hurt anything to go ahead and create this one. So uh, let's go ahead and start the timer and we'll get into it. Please be aware though, I, I don't want to waste your time, that's why these videos are so short. This is not going to be an in-depth look into different shells. We're not going to compare Bash to KSH to Windows Command to PowerShell. That's not what this is. So if you're looking for that, you'll have to find it somewhere else. This is going to be a high-level overview of what a shell is, why we need them, and why the two different types of shells that exist are um, so fundamentally important. All right, let's get going on this. So <clears throat> from a very high level, a shell is a way for a human to interact with a computer. And I think the best way that I can explain this is with an example. So let's cut over here to Firefox real quick. Everyone should understand what an automobile is, what a car is. And looking at this, uh, you can see that this is the, the makings of a car, specifically a Corvette, not that it matters, but uh, you can see that functionally everything is here we have wheels we have a transmission transfer case engine we have everything we need this car works it has everything you need sort of like your operating system fundamentally it has all the resources and all the functions and all the features you need to provide a platform to run services on however much like this car if you don't have a shell of some sort you don't have any way to actually interact with the car if you were to hand this particular car to a human they wouldn't be able to do anything useful with it. To be useful, we need to put a shell on it. In the automotive world, this is called a body, but specifically inside the body, you have the interior. You know, We give it a steering wheel, and we give it pedals, and we give it dials and things to tell us what's going on with it. Without these, the human can't do anything very useful with the car. I mean, it looks pretty, but it's essentially useless. Computers don't need humans to operate. You can configure them and build them to run services without human interaction. But if you ever want to do things, look at log files or open programs, you have to have some sort of shell available. And that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's where the two types of shells come in. And I'm going to use this term in abstract. I'll probably get yelled at in the comments for it, but I don't really care. I'm going to cut back over here to my uh, training VM, my Ubuntu 16.04 VM, this right here is the very first type of shell. It's called a graphical user interface. Now all the hardcore admins out there are going to scream, no, no, only use commands. This is a shell. It is a graphical shell. Be aware that out there in the wild, you're never going to hear someone refer to this as shell. They'll call it your GUI or they'll call it your window manager or something to that extent. It's a graphical user interface, but it is a type of shell. I can click on folders. I can run programs that are in these folders, like my Hello World script. I can shut the computer down. A human can now interact because I've been given a tool with which to interact with it. The other type of shell is a command line interface. Um, this particular operating system comes with a program called Terminal that allows me to have an emulated command line interface, but I can type commands here and do stuff. When we refer to shell and shell scripting, we're always going to be talking about the command line interface, and we'll get to more of that in just a moment. But the important part here is that GUIs are designed to be human friendly. Okay, this is pretty. If I wanted to look at a graph, I could look at it here. I couldn't look at it in a text program. If I want to browse the web, a GUI helps me with that. Command line doesn't. However, one is not superior to the other. They are different tools to solve different problems. And really, where shell scripting comes in is that where GUIs are 
convenient for humans and built to be human friendly, CLIs like shells and terminals are designed to be powerful. For example, I have a log file here and warning, this is a trivial example. I can interact with this file because I have the GUI. I could also interact with it using my terminal. Let's say my boss comes to me and wants me to find all the instances of a fatal exception that's in this log file. Unfortunately, this log file is 500 megabytes. So if I try to open this in my editor, I'm immediately going to get an issue. It's going to try to slurp all this information into memory. It's probably going to crash because I don't have that much memory on this system. And even when I do find it, all I can do is find the instances of the word fatal. I can't take any other actions beyond that. In Shell, I have the ability to run programs. You don't need to know what these are, but grep would let me find the word fatal in that file. It's sitting on my desktop. And I could find them all. I could then send that to the cut program to try to find only the error codes that are in it, grabbing field 2. I could then say, well, actually, I want you to sort those because uh, I want them to also be unique by count. In seconds, I just found not only all the error codes, but how many counts are there for each one. That's why CLI is powerful. You can put all this into a script, and you're done. That ends our five minutes. I mentioned this was going to be a very quick tutorial. I really wasn't trying to demonstrate to you what you can do in shell. This was completely trivial. I was simply trying to explain to you that a shell is a way for a human to interact with a computer. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, look out for more videos. If you want to help, uh, thumbs up really do let me know if a video was useful. You can also leave comments. Uh, the comments sometimes can help spark conversations with people that have further questions. And if you want to subscribe, that also helps me uh, gauge how well the series is doing and helps me get the information out to other people. So thanks again. Have a great day.